the Bills and also some stuff on the Murray McCoy stuff. Jimmy Peachy and John McMullen live here. How are you? Good, guys. How are you? Good. Very well. Uh, I wanted to go to, to one of your stories here this week on uh, the whole Sean McCoy won't shake Chip Kelly's hand. You, you got some quotes in here from Darren Sproles saying, and, and Sproles is the kind of guy who did voice his frustration earlier on this season, but what did you learn uh, this week from Darren Sproles and how he would have handled the situation uh, regarding DeMarco Murray? Uh, that was just kind of a fun conversation with him. Um, yeah. It was just a, a number of reporters kind of crowding around his life. DeMarco Murray wasn't talking at all until he kept, all week he kept just saying Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. Meanwhile, you know, all of us other players on on the team are asking are answering questions about him, and he can hear them, and still he just you know just kind of refused to talk until you know his typical day, which is which is Thursday. Uh, personally, if I were him, I'd just talk, you know, ASAP and get it over with, and then not have to deal with it anymore. But uh, that's kind of the route that he chose. So anyway, we were talking to Sproles in, in front of his locker and. You know, people are just they they were just firing questions off one of them, you know rapid fire. Have you ever sat next to Jeffrey Lurie on the airplane and complained to him? No. <laughs> have you ever sat next to Jeffrey Lurie? No. Have you ever uh, have you ever thought about complaining about your playing time uh, to Chip Kelly or Jeffrey Lurie? No. It was, I don't know, it was just kind of a funny conversation that we had with him. But that's what happens. Like whenever there's any kind of story, uh, you know, with with one player, then. You know, you're going to get the opinion of other players. You know, who's going to be he's going to ask their, the other players their opinion of the matter, and that's just kind of what happened there. Jimmy, uh, I want to talk to bigger faux pas, talking to the owner out of turn on the flight home from a big win or taking up two spaces in the Novacare parking lot. I saw your tweet <laughs> the other day. That's not the Marcos car, is it? Two, anyone who takes up two spaces in the parking lot just – I mean, they're just – and and I think the reason that they do that is so that like people don't bump into their car. <laughs> but I think really, if you do that, you're kind of asking for your car to get keyed. It's like if you make a habit of that, somebody eventually is going to key your car. That's a nice BMW, by yeah, the way. Jimmy. I, I, I was hoping it wasn't Demarco's because that was just <laughs> I mean, not, uh... not that it's going to happen there. Like not that anyone's going to key a car in an overcare complex parking lot. But yeah, somebody parked. Somebody, somebody took up two spots in the, in the like right dead middle of the of the, uh, of, of the uh, dividing line, uh, and they just took up two spots there. And anyone that uh, if, if you are a listener and you do that, I hate you. <laughs> and check out the uh, photo at, at Jimmy Kempsky on Twitter, uh, talking with Jimmy Kempsky of PhillyVoice dot com. Uh, in a bigger, you know, all jokes aside, though, Jimmy. What is it about this organization? It seems to go from distraction to distraction, week after week after week. Can you put your thumb on anything as to why this something keeps popping up? Yeah, well, there are 53 players on uh, on every football team, and the Eagles, by far and away, have the largest media contingent in the NFL. So every little thing that is ever going to happen with um, – with the team is going to be a found out and b just beaten to death. <laughs> so like anytime there is some kind of thing, it really is going to it, it really is going to be magnified. And I don't think you see that everywhere. You're going to see that in St. Louis. You're going to see that in Jacksonville or Kansas City. But here, it's a little bit of a different story uh, because there is so much coverage of the team and because the fan base absorbs it. They they, they take everything in. There's more interest in uh, the football team here than, than there is in most cities across the country. You know, there's some baseball towns, you have some basketball towns. This is clearly a football town, and they consume everything. So I think that – I don't know if there's really so much that it happens. It, there probably is. There probably are more things that happen here than there are across the rest of – I mean, across most of the rest of the league. But, uh, but at the same time, when, when things do happen, it, it really does get covered to an extreme. Jimmy Kemsky, phillyvoice.com, with us here on 97.3 ESPN FM. Were you at the uh, press conferences yesterday and today, Jimmy? I was there yesterday. I was not able to make it in there today. But I okay, did, I so. Did see his, I did see his long thing about um, you McCoy. Know, McCoy and, uh, and how they didn't, how he felt he didn't handle the trade correctly. 
Right. I mean, yesterday, Jimmy, I mean, it was pretty testy in there, I imagine. He, he threatened to walk out. I mean, he pulled that whole podium stunt. Well, to to Zach Berman, well, and then he today was only, he, he, was, he was only kidding when he did that. Yeah, part. right. I mean, yeah, it was it was that, that's Chip being Chip. But today he was kind of uh, forthright about the whole McCoy thing, and and he said, yeah, you know what, we did botch it, and, and you know what, Lashawn McCoy does have a right to be a little pissed off here. So I, I mean, how about Chip Kelly yesterday about Demarco, and then today about uh, Lashawn McCoy? Yeah, it's a sign of chipping you don't see all that often. Um, apologetic chip, <laughs> and uh, and yeah, that's what we saw today. And and he acknowledged that. And I, I hadn't I hadn't heard that that you know they had a deal done and and they were going to wait to announce it. Before, you know, and, and they, they wanted he wanted to talk to Lashawn before it was announced uh, publicly. So I I actually hadn't heard that. Um, but so yeah, I mean it was interesting to, to hear that that's kind of how the, the whole thing went down and and for him to acknowledge that that the player had. Uh, a right to be, you know, angry about, it. especially a guy like Lashawn McCoy, is the all-time leading rusher in franchise history, and really just had a tremendous career here. Uh, for him to kind of just be, <laughs> to just find out, kind of unceremoniously, unceremoniously that he that he had been dealt. Uh, yeah, I can understand where where he'd be annoyed by that. And you know, anytime, whether in any in any business, whether it's football or sales or whatever, if you're let go, and, and you know, his case, he's not let go; he's traded. You know, just kind of feel unwanted in a way, and you know, people kind of feel not happy, <laughs> you know, and not not good about that whenever that happens. So, um, you know, for him to, to kind of find out not from the from the GM or the coach or anyone from the organization and from some kind of outside source, uh, you know, I, I can kind of understand where, where that'd be a little bit, you know, more upsetting than, than it already is. Okay, Jimmy, uh, let's move off ghost of running backs past and move on to the present and, and DeMarco Murray. Uh, Chip kind of said after the New England game that it was just matchups. Uh, are, are you buying that, or is this just a clear indication that he's done with the ineffectiveness and it's going to be uh, Sproles getting more touches or Ryan Matthews coming back from the concussion? Well, we did ask, uh, Sproles was asked that as well, and – you know whether whether that was part of the game plan. You know, kind of trying to exploit the pack or the uh, the Patriots' bigger linebackers with with a little bit you know with guys who have a little bit more quickness. And he said, yeah, that was kind of a big focus. So I, I buy that to a certain extent. Um, for the extreme limited number of snaps that that Murray got, that can't be the only reason why why you know he didn't play uh, all that much. He got 14 snaps. So you know whether. The Patriots linebackers are eight foot, you know, 450 pounds, or, or whether they're six foot 230. You know, I, I think that you know him only getting 14 snaps is a clear indication uh, that they are, you know, not thrilled with with his production on the field. So yeah, I mean, th- this week will be a, a little bit of a of a of you know a secondary test to see you know how much he plays and. And, you know, with Ryan Matthews coming back, there's just one more mouth to feed in the offense. So you have Matthews, they have Sproles. It'll be interesting to see if uh, Kenyon Barner is, is active or inactive and if he continues to get opportunities. But certainly, you know, you get 14 carries and you're making as much money as DeMarco Murray does, there's something up. Uh, Jimmy, does Chip, do you think, have to – maybe sit to Marco Murray, maybe deactivate him if Ryan Matthews is good to go and just go with Matthews, Sproles, and Barner. Not to mention he, he is ineffective. And number two, oh, yeah, you did go to the owner. You kind of went above my head to, to complain about your playing time. Is there a chance that we don't see DeMarco Murray on Sunday? I would be shocked if they did that. Um, I don't think they're going to do that. It, although you know, if they did do it, you know, certainly that would send a statement that uh, you know that that kind of stuff isn't going to be tolerated. But um, yeah, I'd be, I'd be very, very, very surprised if, if if they went that direction. Do you think he has a future here in in 2016? I mean, there was that report today from Bleacher Report that Murray's trying to maybe force himself to get cut so he can maybe reunite in Dallas. What about his? And, and I know his cap hit is is outrageous, but uh, how about his future next season here with the Birds? Well, he costs more to cut than he does to keep. Um, so I don't, I don't see him going anywhere. I think they're just kind of stuck with him, and he's stuck with them um, through next year. I'd have to, I, I, I took a look at his contract, but I don't remember exactly off the top of my head um, what the ramifications are if, if he's cut slash traded slash 
um, whatever, <laughs> you know, keep them. So, uh, but I do know for sure that next year they it will cost, and not just more, but significantly more. It'll cost like six million dollars more to cut them than to just keep them. So, you know, if you keep them, just make them inactive every week, then <laughs> you know there's there's a six million dollar savings, and he doesn't he doesn't ever hit the field, and you don't really hear much from him or, or anything like that. But you know, certainly he'd still kind of be in the mix and could be a distraction, I guess. But uh, I don't think that you cut a guy. I think you kind of try to mend the fences uh, rather than cut a guy who's going to cost six million more uh, to cut and keep. Chat and Eagles with Jimmy Kemsky of Philly Voice. Uh, and Jimmy, you know there is a game this Sunday, and it's a really important game uh, for yeah. both sides. Philadelphia, obviously, uh, among the mix to win a very bad division, but this is just as big for Buffalo in the wild card hunt. Uh, what do we see from the Bills? Uh, what, what do you think are the key matchups for this game? Yeah, well, uh, the Bills have a really good rushing attack, obviously, with the aforementioned LaShawn McCoy and they have Carlos Williams, and then they have a, uh, a running quarterback in Tyrod Taylor. So they like to run the ball. They're fourth in the NFL in rushing, and they're fourth in the NFL in yards per carry. So they're effective with it. And, you know, the Eagles really have to do a good job um, up front. They're, first of all, they're first and foremost, obviously, they're, they're three defensive linemen there who were very good stopping the run early in the season. And then as the season wore on, the Eagles have had, you know, their issues stopping the run. They've been a little bit been more porous than they were early in the season. But I think also the guys on the outside, and Connor Barwin and Brandon Graham have to do a good job setting the edge because the Bills do have guys that like to bounce it outside, like LaShawn McCoy and, and Tyrod Taylor like to get outside and run with it. So those guys have to do a good job. And then the corners, even. The corners, um, they're going to have some opportunities to make some tackles, I would think, on LaShawn McCoy where, you know, again, like I said, they like to bounce it outside. So those guys have to you know be willing to stick their nose in there and make tackles. And I think so far, for the most part, They've done that. Byron Maxwell's had its moment. But I think what we've seen so far in Eric Rowe is that, you know, he's, he's willing to kind of make some hits and, and stick his nose in there. <clears throat> excuse me. And then, um, you know, defensively, oh, excuse me, offensively, you look at the Bills. Last year, they had 54 sacks, which was best in the NFL. And then this year, they have 18. So they've really fallen off this year in terms of their ability to get to the quarterback. But they have proven with the guys that they have that they can get there. And we've seen kind of mixed results from the Eagles offensive line as the season has gone along. Sometimes they're really good. Other times they've had, you know, defensive linemen wreck the game, like in the interior with, with Ndamukong Su and, and, Mar- and, um, and uh, uh, Gerald McCoy from, from, from the Buccaneers. So, you know, the Bills have a, have a really good interior guy in Marcel Darius. And then they have, you know, Mario Williams, who had 38 sacks in 2012, 2014. Again, his number's taking a dip this year, but they do have guys that can get to the quarterback. So their offensive line really has played well this game as well. And, and in your five matchups to watch on Sunday between the Eagles and the Bills, you highlight one of them. You just alluded to it, Lane Johnson versus Mario Williams. He's going to be matching up with him uh, the majority of the day. But you also highlight Eric Rowe versus Sammy Watkins. Yep. Watkins' last two games, nine catches, 267, three touchdowns. He's kind of complained a little bit earlier this season about his usage, but how about the matchup between Rowe, and, and these quarterbacks aren't afraid to test Rowe with the deep ball, and Tyrod Taylor has that deep ball. How about the matchup between Eric Rowe and Sammy Watkins on Sunday, Jimmy? Sure, yeah, I mentioned the Bills running game and what happens when you have a really good running game is you get those safety starts to cheat up a little bit. And then they'll try to get you on the long ball over the top. And I think Eric Rowe had a great game last week against the Patriots and his first start and going up against Tom Brady. Uh, obviously, the receivers that they have aren't the same as what he faced when he had to come into the, the game midway against the Lions. And he kind of got a welcome to the NFL moment from, from Calvin Johnson uh, on Thanksgiving. But uh, I think he's been okay since. Uh, in, in the majority of, of his playing time this year. He had a really nice game early on against the Jets when he had to fill in where he had an interception and a few nice pass breakups. And one thing that I think he really does well is he does handle those deep plays well. So, you know, he'll, he's going to face a lot of Sammy Watkins. Sammy Watkins primarily lines up on his side of the field. So he's going to get a lot of opportunities there. And, and Eric Rose said that, you know, the one thing that he really has to be cognizant of is not getting beaten over the top. He wants to keep everything in front of him. 
You know, Jimmy, one of the things I'm concerned about when I look at a Bill Davis defense against a mobile quarterback is that preference for the single high safety, a lot of man-to-man coverage. And when you turn your back uh, to a player like Taylor, uh, he can run up right, you know, up your back if you're not careful. Uh, Do you sense that they're aware of that and they're kind of tweaking things? Maybe we'll see a spy this week or something of that nature? Yeah, they did a little bit of that against uh, the Seahawks last year when they played Russell Wilson. You saw kind of Michael Kendricks uh, spying uh, uh, Russell Wilson for the better part of the afternoon that day. And I thought they were pretty effective uh, in, in, in their defensive scheme against them. They lost that game, obviously, but it was more because the offense didn't get anything going. So, yeah, I think they'll, they'll switch things up a little bit. They don't want to, you know, like you said, have their backs turned uh, regularly in, in, in that man defense. Him kind of get them on the ground, but it'll be a mix of everything. They'll, they'll play some man, but I think you're right. I think they'll, they'll they'll probably try to mix in a little bit more zone than they normally do. Uh, talking with Jimmy Kemsky, phillyvoice.com. Real quick follow up on Taylor. Forgot to get to it. Do you think there was anything? There were some significant rumors at some yeah. points <laughs> this season that he said he wanted to play for the Philadelphia Eagles. He wanted to be in this offense. Do you get a feeling? That that went down, the Eagles just kind of looked at him and said, eh, we don't want you? Well, I mean, I don't know if it's even a rumor, really, because if he said it, <laughs> you know, if he, if he said he wanted to play for the Eagles, then, then uh, you know, I, I, I tend to believe him. And uh, the Eagles went a different direction. They, they, they uh, I, I don't know, I don't know exactly how the timeline works on this. I remember covering it back, you know, months ago. I don't remember exactly how it went down again, but, you know, obviously they wound up with, with Tim Tebow. Um, and Tim Tebow didn't make the team. Tyrod Taylor, had he made the team, he probably wouldn't have played at all. <laughs> you know, he'd probably still be the, the number three quarterback, you'd think, because, you know, nobody was going to beat out Sam Bradford in, in, in the preseason, clearly, because they traded a two and Nick Foles and... $13 million, uh, right. And they paid, and he's the highest paid player on the team. So there was no way that Tyrod Taylor was going to beat out Sam Bradford for... You know the starting the starting job, and for what they're paying Mark Sanchez, Mark Sanchez is, is the 29th highest paid quarterback in the NFL. So you know they play him almost kind of like a starter. He's one of the highest paid backups in the NFL, so he was going to be backup. So if Tyrod Taylor had been signed by the Eagles, and and uh, you know they had him here on the team, he'd be nothing more than a three, and he'd probably be inactive most weeks. So um, you know while I do think it is an inter- it is an interesting thing that that he wanted to play for the Eagles eventually wound up with the Bills. It worked out certainly for him that he went to Buffalo and he's getting a chance to start. But obviously if you're the Eagles, you know, you'd prefer to have him than, you know, what they did with with, uh, with Tim Tebow. And they eventually actually ended up with a uh, former Buffalo quarterback in, in Sad Lewis. Uh, but, you know, he, Tyra T- Taylor has, has turned out to be a, a pretty talented player. And I don't know if he's really an answer for a quarter, for, for quarterback in terms of, you know, quote-unquote franchise quarterback that's been bringing to the Super Bowl. But he has shown that he has talent, and, you know, they, they've won some games with them uh, up there in Buffalo. So, you, you know, you'd certainly rather have him than Tim Tebow. But I think that, I think that would be a, a pretty clear point. And that's really what happens, Jimmy, uh, when you get stuck behind Joe Flacco for, for multiple seasons. You know, you really don't yeah. know. You don't get any playing time. The guy plays all the time, and you, you don't really know what you have. But uh, let, let's kind of transition to the Eagles quarterback in Sam Bradford. Coming off the injury, ha- had a pretty good game against New England. The last couple games he's played, he hasn't turned the ball over. The, those end zone interceptions are a thing of the past for right now. But how do you think uh, Bradford has played the last few games coming off the concussion and the shoulder injury, and what do you expect from Sam uh, against this Rex Ryan defense on Sunday? It was okay. He <laughs> was okay last week. Um, you know, he's, I think it was, what, was he, 14 of 24, something like that. He only had 120 yeah. uh, passing yards, and he didn't really need to do much because – Game manager had, type, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they had three return touchdowns. They had an interception return, they had a punt return, and they had, um, and they had the punt block return. So, you know, at some point during that game – the emphasis was going to be not turning on the not turning the ball over. So they didn't ask him to do all that much. And you're right, he didn't turn the ball over. If I recall, he might have had a, a couple of balls that, that were close uh, to being picked off. But for the most part, they didn't ask him to do a lot, and he didn't have to do a lot. So it was one of those games where it's really kind of uh, difficult to say whether he played really well or not. I thought his two touchdown throws were 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 well placed passes, especially the one uh, in the front corner of the end zone to to Jordan Matthews, who who made a sliding catch. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I, I think a better test will be this week when, when it's a little bit more of a different game, when you have the three return touchdowns 
and uh, you're really just kind of trying to hold on to that lead. You're not being aggressive and attacking down the field like you normally would if it's a closer game or if you're behind or whatever. Uh, but I think this week will, will be a better indication of, of how he's kind of returned from, from those injuries. All right, Jimmy Kemsky, phillyvoice.com, covering the Eagles all week long, and he'll be at the link for Eagles, Bills, LaShawn McCoy's homecoming. Jimmy, have that camera ready in case LaShawn McCoy does, in fact, shake Chip Kelly's hand, all right? <laughs> That'll be, it'll, be, it'll be a magical moment, for sure. Yeah, fat, fat chance. All right, Jimmy, thanks, man. <laughs> thanks, guys. Appreciate it.